Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to be doing some more network automation and in this video we're going to be using the tool Napalm. Now Napalm is a network automation and programmability abstraction layer with multi-vendor support which is a mouthful but the tool is actually so cool. Um, so what is Napalm, what does it do? Well first off before I do that, if you're wondering about the CCMP switching series that's going to be continuing but for the rest of the week I'm actually going to be out of the country believe it or not, um, dead exciting stuff <laughs> and uh, so I won't be able to get around to that so about a week's time I'll recontinue that series but in the meantime just to fill the gap I'm going to give you a little network automation video to chew through. So like I say Napalm, Napalm is really cool, it's very easy to use, it gives you a lot of abstraction which is as the name suggests which really means that a lot of the the coding is hidden from you, you can just really use the tool and people who are much smarter than me, much better programmers than me have coded this stuff to make it a lot easier. But a lot easier and usable for network engineers to use and to automate their networks. So like I say, it's very handy for multi-vendor environments because you just effectively specify um, the image you're using, so iOS for Cisco or EOS for Arista or Junos for Juniper. And Napalm is actually smart enough to know, okay, the user has told me we're using iOS, so I'm going to be using um, Cisco command line syntax and if he specifies JunoS they'll use Juniper command line syntax and there's a common set of modules which will do the same thing, they'll grab um, maybe interface uh, statistics and you'll get maybe serial numbers and MAC addresses and MTUs and whatever blah de blah and you don't need to worry about how to code all this stuff Napalm is really going to abstract that and make it easier for you so Without um, going on too long, I think the best thing to do would just be to show you some configurations. So, the basic configuration which we've got here is um, a general switch network and these red links are our out of band management links. They've been VRF'd off so they're not a separate network completely, um, virtual routing table. And just to give us some configuration to look at, I've just randomly put in some stuff. So I've um, I put BGP on here, IBGP between all of these uh, devices here, the two central nodes, three and four switches, um, they are BGP root reflectors, just put that in there and I've configured some loopbacks, I can't remember what switches, I think switch two and switch three, maybe more than that. I put some loopbacks with some different net, uh, network masks on them just so we've got some more devices to check. And that's that, so without further ado let's just have a look at the actual setup and configurations. Now. Okay, so the IP address which I've got is this one here, okay, 192.168.153.1 and the devices, oh, do you know what, screen that. And the devices which I'm pinging switch to is 192.168.153.2, which you can ping. Switch 3 is 3, switch 4 is 4 and I've also set up stuff like SSH on the devices, so SSH um, John at, in fact, do you know what I'll tell you, before I even do that, I've actually configured, um, let me just do cat, etsy, hosts, in fact I've not even done that yet, I'm telling you the stuff I've done and I haven't even done it yet, so what I'll do is I'll do it right now, that's probably even better. So sudo vim etsy host, now what I'm effectively doing here is creating my own little DNS, so when I type in an IP address, or rather if I type in a host name, it's going to resolve it to the IP address, so let's go and create them. Okay, so the first IP address will be switch2 and it's going to be 192.168.153.2 and the name we're going to call it is switch2, so if I write ping switch2, this file will uh, change that to 192.168.153.2 and ping that IP address. So let's do that for the rest of them, 153.3 will be switch3, 192.168.153.4 oh, is switch4. 192.168.153.5 and this switch 6 to switch 7 will be my Arista switches and the others will be Cisco. Switch 7, switch 7, 192.168.153.8, switch 8. Okay, save you. Right, so if I do ping switch 2 it's going to resolve it to this IP address now, okay? And also, if I do my um, 
SSH John at Switch 2. Yes. And the password I've created on him is IPv0. Uh, just put all these in there now. IPv0, let's check they're all gone. IPv0. And the Arista switches. And the last one, just check it's all fine before I start running these tests. Yep, we can get to them. Now what I want to say is, if you're going to practice this and use a wrist of switches, just be aware of this, okay? See when you're configuring it, you'll actually, rather than configuring, Napalm is not going to go through the SSH, is going to go through this. Um, what is it? Management, API, HTTPS commands. And what you need to do here, after you type that command on the wrist of switches, do a no shut. And then you would give it your login information, which I've already done for. Yep. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's effectively the information I've done. Okay. That means when Napalm goes to reach this device, it's going to reach over this this uh, API here, and that'll be that. With the Cisco devices, it's just a generic a a SSH connection, so it doesn't really matter to quit changing that. It's just your basic setup there. Okay, so let's have a look. Um, let's go into Napalm. And I've created some folders here, right? The main thing I want to focus on right now is this little script I've written here. It's called getfax.py. So let's have a look at it. Now, do you know what? I'll actually put it into Vim so we can see it with the color on it. It might be a little bit easier to um, read. Okay, so what I've done, first off, I've installed Napalm, of course. And the very start, I'm just bringing in from Napalm and I'm porting this thing called a Get Network Driver. This is what we're going to use to connect to the devices. The second thing I'm importing is JSON, so the script can basically understand um, JSON. It can it can actually take the information and we can put it out in JSON format. Now, the next part we've got this little list, and I've just called this list this list, <laughs> Cisco underscore IP, these are going to be our Cisco devices, you can call this absolutely anything, just so long as you keep the reference consistent, okay, so I've got Cisco underscore IP, and these are the devices we're going to log into, switch to, remember, we've created our little DNS file, so it's going to know switch to is going to go to 192.168.153.2, the next one is switch 3, which is going to be 192.168.153.3, switch 4, uh, uh, 192.168.153.4, is it 153, is that right? Yeah, it's 153.4, switch 5, uh, dot 5 is going to be, okay? Now, this is the little loop we're creating for IP and Cisco IP, okay? So what I'm basically saying is, this little list here, for every one, and that, so for example, for switch 2, for switch 3, for switch 4, for switch 5, i.e. each IP address, and it's going to be called IP. I'm going to print this out. This is just a separate, this is just a visual thing, it's not part of the real code, it's just a visual thing, so when you see it come out, it's going to look a little bit cleaner. And I've created this variable called DRV in caps lock, which is going to be the driver. Now, this is the thing we imported, see this get network driver, this is the thing we imported up here, and this is a bit of the magic from uh, Napalm. Now see the thing I write in here, this is what's going to tell Napalm how to interact with the device. Because I've written iOS, it knows this is going to be a Cisco device. If I change that to EOS or Junos, it will act differently, okay? Now the next thing I've done is this variable here, this DRV, I've also created another variable with that called Cisco underscore device. And I'm referencing that variable and also referencing the IP addresses which we're going to iterate through. So that's going to be 192.168.153.2 and then 192.168.153.3 and then .4 and then .5. And I'm also telling it John is the username and after that the password is IPv0. The next thing we're going to do is use this, this uh, method with, which is going to effectively open a connection, Cisco device, this variable with the .open method. Then I've created another variable called response, okay, and that's going to use 
um, the Cisco device variable which I've created with this module. This is a, a thing which is built into Napalm get facts and this is what it's going to do it's going to grab these certain facts this is pre-programmed by napalm you don't need to worry about it if you just type this word in dot get facts napalm's going to do it all for you then i've created yet another variable called dump underscore output and this is what we're going to do we're going to grab the thing and put it into json so json dot dumps okay that's the method and we're going to call this variable here the response which is effectively what we're after and I've given it some indentation of uh, four, four inputs, four indents rather, <laughs> okay? And then at the very end, print the dump output variable, okay? That's for the Cisco switches. Now, bear in mind, if you find this super confusing, that is totally normal and don't be discouraged because you don't really need to know this and I'm gonna show you why. But you do it when you want to write your own scripts, but you can adapt this one I've got and I'll show you how to just basically get lots of different information using Napalm without even knowing how to program this. Okay, so the next thing is Arista underscore IP. These are our Arista devices. So this is going to be switch 6, switch 7, switch 8, which according to our DNS file is 192.168.153.6, 153.7, 153.8.com. And again, the same thing happens for IP and Arista IP. So for example, for IP and Arista IP, this list here, go through them, iterate through them, then print this thing here plus the actual name of the host. Again, this variable called DRV is going to take the get network driver which we've imported from Napalm and this time we've told it EOS rather than iOS which is letting Napalm know these devices are going to be Arista devices, interact with it, knowing that it's Arista you're dealing with, okay? Now we've created a variable called Arista device, taking that variable, the DRV, we're passing the IP which is iterated through with the list, okay, so 192.168.153.6 the first time, then dot seven, then dot eight, then dot eight, using the username John and the password IPv0. Again, we're going to use the arista.device variable with the method open, which is going to open the connection, and the response is going to take the variable arista device with the get facts module. This is which is built into um, Napalm. Same thing again, dump the output, put it into JSON, take the response, which is the variable which you created, and create an indentation of four spaces, then print the output. And that's it. Again, if this is super confusing, it was absolutely confusing to me at first when I started doing this. It's just a matter of practice. This is not an intelligence thing. You see the same pattern repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating. But like I say, independent of whether you think you could write something like this or not, I'm going to show you how to be able to adapt it and use it even if you don't fully understand the logic behind what's going on, okay? So just continue on watching and don't be discouraged. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to exit out now showing you that. And the infamous quit and vi or quit and vim. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Python 3 and just run this script, okay? And we're going to get these facts. This is this is us running the Napalm module. Okay. That's the first one, and you can see it's in this JSON format. If you're unfamiliar, you can tell with these little curly braces. So we're just pulling out generic facts, host name, the IP domain name, serial numbers, OS type, the vendor, the uptime, the list of interfaces. That's what the get facts module does. And you see we've got a consistent set of information independent of a uh, platform. It doesn't matter that um, we've got Arista and, and the other one is uh, Cisco. Napalm is smart enough to be able to parse this information and get the same type of information independent of the platform so we can get this in this nice little file, okay? Now, so you might think, okay, well that's pretty good, but is this all I can do with this? Well, no, look at this. If we go to this uh, URL here, okay, these are a bunch of the actual um, Napalm modules which we have, okay? So there's all these things here like compare config, um, discard config, get app table, get BGP config, uh, get BGP neighbors. So you can just substitute these things in. See where I wrote the get facts one? Just substitute one of these in and see what, see what comes out. Test it out. Get firewall policies. 
get interfaces, get interface counters, and it's just giving you an example. So let's try this one, get interfaces IP. Okay, we'll go with that one. So let's modify this script then. Get facts, let's have a look. Uh, actually, do you know what, we'll copy it first. We'll do copy get facts, and we'll call this um, interface underscore IP dot PY, and we'll edit this one. And all we'll do effectively is just change this module. So rather than get facts, we'll just go in and do this one here. So get interfaces IP. So delete that. Get interfaces underscore IP. Underscore IP. Save that. And now we'll do Python 3 interfaces. Now we're getting different information just by simply doing that, just changing that model. I just looked up the Napalm website, changed a couple of words, that was it. Now if you download this script from a GitHub, you can do the exact same thing. You don't really need to understand the full logic if you're still confused, if you're still learning. If you do understand the logic, even better. But you get plenty of time to practice this. The best thing to do, I think, is just try it out and just get your hands dirty with this stuff. So, another little tool I have created here is, if you follow my along, I've got these... I tend to like using a little bit of grep tools. So if I do it to CD outputs, or rather, yes, yeah, here. This one here, grep tool. Okay, this is going to make it a little bit easier to see. So if I do, um, I'll go back out this first actually. And what I'll do is I'll just do Python 3 and I'll do get facts. Now, rather than printing it out on the console here, I'll redirect the input into a file within the outputs directory. And I'll call it, um, what is it, facts.text, whatever. Okay, so when I hit this, we're not going to see the input on the screen. It's instead going to be loaded into a newly created text file called facts within the outputs uh, directory. And from that point, I'm going to use grep to actually grep through the text to make it a little bit easier to see. So this should take a wee minute and we'll have that. Okay, so let's CD into output. So if I do cat grep tool, just I'll just copy paste this. Now if I do a cat um, of this little text file and I pipe it to the grep tool, we're going to highlight all the stars, which is going to easily denote the differences in the switches. Okay, so we can quickly see switch eight's there, switch seven's there, switch six. Um, Five. And like I say, you can easily change this grep tool. Imagine you had, say, a hundred devices, but you tried to find the serial number. You could just do the same thing, but change. I'm basically, this script is saying, see this little dot, this sorry, this little star? We're going to highlight this as red. But if you want to highlight, maybe say the word serial, just delete that and type in serial and do the same thing. Now we're going to highlight where the serial numbers are. Now I risk that it doesn't actually show you serial numbers on there, but if you go to the Cisco ones, we can see that serial numbers here for switch 5. Quickly just scan to the serial number here. You can do that, okay? So super, super easy. And like I say, Napalm makes it really easy for you to get started on this. I'll do one more actually just before I stop the video. So um, we'll do, we'll copy the interface IP and we'll make this one a BGP one. So bgp.py and we'll go and edit that file. And let's have a look at the BGP ones we can use. Uh, find BGP config. We'll do this one. Get BGP underscore neighbors, okay? So let's just edit the script this time. And again, we'll use the module. We'll do just delete this and do get BGP, what was it? Underscore neighbors. And same for the Arista devices. And like I say, see if you're doing this and you don't have Arista devices, just delete this part of the script, see all this part? Just take it and delete all that. And if you've got more than, or rather take it from 
this part, should I say, and delete all that. Just have the script here for Cisco, and you can make this list longer if you want, and have more Cisco devices. Super, super easy. Uh, neighbors, and that's that. Okay, so if we do, and we can our BGP. Okay, so that's that. And again, we'll pipe the output back to um, the text file. So we'll do a Python 3, getting BGP information. I'm going to redirect it into the outputs folder and we'll just call it bgp.txt. Okay. So we should be grabbing the BGP information from the five Cisco devices and the three Arista devices pipe them into a text file and we can use a grep tool to highlight out the stars to make it easily visible to read through. Be any minute now, should just come back up and get the information. Oh, wait, the now get BGP of oh, misspelled that. You see that? So, this is how you troubleshoot on the fly. I'll just do vim a BGP and I will spell this right this time. There we go. How's that for troubleshooting? <laughs> Try again. You realise when you're actually doing stuff like programming, syntax is everything. Like, see the amount of times a, a misplaced colon can be your undoing. It's unbelievable, so it is. <laughs> or a, mis a misspelled word happens all the time. I think it's just part and parcel of the the process. I don't know how software engineers can do this. I mean, it's it's pretty it's pretty intense. Okay, so that should be a bit better. So we go into our outputs. And again, we'll just grab our little grep tool to highlight the output. And we'll do cat bgp text and pipe it with the grep tool. And there we go, as our devices. And we've grabbed all that. So we'll switch eight, let's get this. BGP stuff. Um, here's the remote AS, remote ID, local AS, AS family. These are the prefixes that's received. So on and so forth. Um, And if you just scroll up through these ones. See here, I'll just switch for um, description. These are root reflector clients. Um, it's just all there and you just search through it all. Really, really simple. And like I say, you can change, you should be grip if you want to look out for certain uh, ASs, for certain um, IDs. You can just change the grep tool to suit that. So that's pretty much the little introduction to Napalm. It really isn't that difficult. Like I say, the script might seem confusing if you don't know, but even if you don't quite understand it, just download it and mess about with it and just try changing these parameters. Go to this page and change these values to whatever, get config, get fax, get firewall policies, get interfaces. There's a whole bunch of them there, counters. Um, and it's just fun, get your app table, stuff like that and just get your hands dirty and do it because it really isn't difficult once you start. So that's the end of the video. Um, next week, like I say, I'll be back with the CCMP Switch series. Um, thanks for everyone that's supporting me and I really appreciate that and I'll see you guys soon. Okay, doke. So see you soon and bye-bye.